Thanks for staying with us. He's a tech guru, filmmaker, who's making a great impact in the movie industry. He's also the CEO of Anaco, a prominent digital agency who has just produced and directed brilliant movies like Up North, Day of Destiny, and the latest sensational blockbuster, The Black Book. Welcome with us, Editi Efyog in the building. <laughs> Good to have you. You know, honestly, when I, I think it was um, you did it, I said, Eddie, don't do film. That about a few weeks, weeks, <laughs> weeks back before the movie came out. Yeah. Said, which, which movie is Eddie? Which movie? When Nam came out, I was like, oh, that's the Eddie, don't do film. Yeah. But yeah. How, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, actually. Congratulations on the new blockbuster. Yeah. Um, it's doing pretty well on Netflix. Uh, well done. And um, I mean, I, I really thought it was quite, it was an interesting movie. Tell us a bit about the scripting. Um, how do you come about the script, or, um, or was, this, was this sold to you? Did you buy it? Did you do it yourself? How exactly was that? Did you come about the script for this movie? Um, I, I start by like how I describe myself. I'm an entrepreneur working in tech, advertising, and film. And generally, when I do a thing, I just put everything into doing a thing to like, mm. you know, be the best <laughs> I can be at everything I do. So I, I do understand that when people meet with me because I work in tech, they don't expect that I'll be an artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so they ask about how I, who I bought the script from, uh, and because they don't expect that because write I write script. code, I do not, I don't write script. Like mm -hmm. I grew up, I grew up an artist. I grew up in a home with like full of books. Mm. My dad had like a um, master's degree in linguistics. That means that I, I, I grew up in a house where it's books, yeah. just books. I read the entire African writer series. I was 12 years old. Mm. Great. I read tw uh, Things Fall Apart when I was 11 going on 12. Wow. Mm -hmm. I read A Man Died when I was 14. Wow. <laughs> yeah. and, and then it was the most complicated book I'd read. And then, you know that thing, you're reading a book and you feel like you should drink olive oil so <laughs> your brain would find. <laughs> yeah, was... But yeah, so um, it, it's that upbringing that it stays with you. It, right. it, it allows you to become so right. many different things. My dad didn't want me to be an artist, obviously, so he uh, ensured that everything was signed. So I was surrounded by science. Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> I, I was a pure parents. science student, like right. pure absolute science student. <laughs> so I can understand, understand the world right. from all the different sides of it. I worked in tech. I worked in marketing. I worked in oil. Mm -hmm. my, my actual first job was in oil. Oh, wow. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Let me let our viewers watch this clip before yeah. coming to more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't so want to be. I watched that movie <laughs> and I had the bumps. I had yeah. goosebumps. I was going to talk about the script, oh, but let me let you jump I because. I wanted to ask, you know, some part of the movie looks so real. I mean, some movies have been done in the past where I thought, oh, this is looks so real. And they said, no, we didn't shoot it there. How did you shoot the market scene, the Lagos Island scene where Shafi Bello looks like a proper Lagosian? Mm. That movie, and she spoke some real. But how did you shoot? Did you shoot in the market in the Lagos oh, Island different. market? We built 38 sets during oh. the course of this film. 30. 38. So wow. you see things that, that look super real mm -hmm. thanks to a man called Pat Nebo recently passed. Oh, yes. I know Pat Nebo very well. Mm. Yes. Pat Nebo was magical. And we worked, we worked for six months before we, um, we shot the film. And he built mini sets just to, if you want to create a world mm. in film, I want people to believe in that world. The first thing you do is build that world so that people see it and it feels real to them. Once you feel it feels real, then people then believe whatever the actor does within that set. Mm -hmm. And everything that is not a human being on a set is production design. Mm -hmm. And it's how you allow humans and the audiences believe in, in what you're portraying in the film. Mm -hmm. So now to the mm -hmm. market, that was Lagos Island. Right, because you have to recognize the landmarks, yes. Yes. you know, and so you believe that this person is, this In one is a Lagos Island market woman. Mm. However, the next thing you do is now build the characters into that location. So that was Lagos Island, or a big, huge street, part of the market on Sunday morning. Okay. It's okay. empty, absolutely empty. Mm -hmm. And so we arrived there by 6 a.m. And by 10 a.m., we have brought in 300 extras, we brought in Whoa. wares, we brought everything in, and then I, <laughs> I, I shared like a thing where like the extras are just standing there, mm -hmm. you know, just waiting, and then action, everyone starts moving. Hey, my friend, you, hey, you know, like, and, the real market scenery. But the thing is, you don't notice when you watch the making of it is that the extras are all quiet. Mm. 
they don't make any sound. sound. Oh. The sound is it's recorded secondary, oh. you know, because if you did See, that, you couldn't hear the actor. Oh, and not just that, like um, this actor who is going through the market is 59 years old at this point. And in 2021, COVID is still there. Mm -hmm. And that is the most at risk age mm. demographic. Mm -hmm. Of course. So we have to test over 30. Every single person has contact with him have to test for COVID mm. so wow. that because actors wow. can't wear masks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is... So that's the RM do not catch COVID. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that is just like the, the technicality, the, the logistics of actually making that scene. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. we're told that you uh, did some parts in the North. In Kaduna, we shot in Lagos. Yes, in what inspired that? Having like a difference, because normally when we see most uh, producers, they will like a place like Lagos and some other western villages, depending on what they want to get. But why did you pick the north? What feel were you looking for? Authenticity and simplicity. Okay. It's the thing we always defaulted to. And um, my first film was up north. It was the Which first. I love. <laughs> yeah, it was until the Black Book, the, the, the up north was the biggest film ever done in the north. Mm -hmm. And I, in 2015, after the elections, I kind of felt like there's a, there was a disconnect with the country that I didn't understand. And I, to, to fix that for myself, I started traveling the entire country. I ended up spending a lot of time in the north. And it was in Zamfara. I, I were lost in, we're not, we're not lost, we just ran out of water. Mm -hmm. in, in Boko, in Zamfara. Boko is fantastic because it's got this like miles and miles of like beach sand. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous, like a river, you know the northern rivers, how they are, and then there's a lot of beach sand. But like, we ran out of water, and then I went to this house in north and asked for water. It's an old woman. Usually, northern homes are in compounds mm -hmm. where the women live inside, but for some reason, this old crazy woman was like, <laughs> on the outside. I'm a rebel. Yeah. <laughs> and so she brought us water, but then she also brought food. It might have been her last meal because she, she, she was a Aww. poor woman. Mm -hmm. And I, I came out of that trip. Uh, with a thing, I always say to people that people are just people. Yeah. They're looking for the same things. They have the same wants and needs. And they're just, everyone's like us. And I'm like, the second thing I say is I'm going to write about this place. I'm yes. ready to make films, and this is where I want to start. And so I started writing the outline of this ethic boy or Ibibio boy, anyway, from my place, mm -hmm. who's rich, is coming from Lagos to the north to this NYC. So the north had sort of like got its tentacles into mm -hmm. me. I, the texture of the North, the people in the North, it's just the way people are. And for me, and then historically, Nigeria, every, every, everything in Nigeria history passes through. There was a time you can't do anything without passing through Kaduna. It just made sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's... Hey, so, um, you know, watching the movie and looking at you, I, I, I see you. I mean, you know, in movies, you can say you see the actors, but I see the producer in it and I now understand your story and how it's reflected. So you're artistic, you're creative, and you're also into tech. So I see how you've told the story in such a way that, you know, um, you brought, because first of all, when it comes to action movies, we think of Oimbo action movies, mm -hmm. but you made it Nigerian. Yes. So you, and then the way, of course, you put it, showed your tech um, strength as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm understanding that who we are, how we grow up, you know, just reflects in everything that we do and you know earlier when you came in i was like you seem different from your twitter <laughs> your twitter persona so how would you say because of the way that you are and you have turned out and then you have young people who are looking to be in this business how would you encourage them you know to just do what they're doing and it will somehow reflect the way it's doing with you um i'm going to reference paula dima's character in the film he is a deacon, a preacher, a man of God. He's a guy who works in a factory, right, and drives heavy equipment. He is also a former assassin. He is a community leader. People love him in his community. He's a philanthropist. But he is also a bad person. People are complicated. Well, at the same time. People well. are complicated. Every human being is complicated. And, and when people get in front of a TV, in front of a screen or TV appear, you, no one knows what is going on in your life or your life or your life. We humans, we tend to put our best foot forward in front of strangers. We always have to remember that the person on Twitter is always putting the best foot forward, trying to put the best of themselves forward. <laughs> right? But beyond that, 
they are people are just people everyone yeah. has things that they they are dealing with you know and you do not know and so i i think that is ultimately what drives right. the, the way i create mm. to to explore the humanity under the veil of yeah. what we've put to the world you know i, I admired it? the depth in the script which i like to go back to because each of the characters were quite intense. Every single character had some kind of a, um, a history, just like you just ex explained right now. Um, tell us about the, how were you able to characterize every single role? I mean, those roles were quite different. The generals, the um, Shafi Bello's role, and you also brought all those veterans together. Some yes. of those veterans that were not on scene on wow. screen. Yeah. Was it intentional? I mean, or did you want to just have, the, you didn't think of bringing in new, just new faces? I mean, I just saw quite a number of, Veterans I haven't seen in a while in, in Hollywood. Uh, I, from, for casting, I work with Lala Kendoji. For script, I work with Bumi Alakije. Uh, Alakije. Uh, Jackie. Hi, Bumi. Sorry. I <laughs> murdered your name right there. Uh, Bumi is like one of my favorite people. Um, and um, I did promise to ruin Bumi's life because Bumi named a shit character Oops. after me. <laughs> oh, this is thing like artists do when they 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 play like, this I little will prank. I stick it to you here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and well, I haven't done that to me yet. I'm gonna name a character after her. It's gonna be a terrible character. <laughs> anyway, so um, it was really a lot of fun creating this character, and exploring, and and to be very honest with you, the film is two hours long, and it could have been four hours. The first the first cut was four and a half, so we have two Whoa. and a half hours of film. You know, on the edit room floor. You're kidding There's me. There's so much exploration that could have been done. The characters, you know, oh. the depth of them, that we we ended like you have to balance for pace and you know, people, people's attention. But that said, creating the characters, our the idea for us was to ensure that every character seemed human. Every character was grounded in the reality of Nigeria. Yeah. For example, we we had a U.S. Marine coming and train RMD, fighting weapons handling. Sounded. Yes, but it was important to us that the fight does not look like Hollywood. Mm -hmm. oh. That's the Nigerianization you did. Right. We could have easily done the Hollywood flicks and stuff, but it was important to fight with fists. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And so, you know that thing where the, the people are fighting and they're using like a specialist equipment? I was like, no, use... What we know. What yeah, we use the thing in the kitchen. <laughs> Hit this guy on the head with a flask. Mm. Uh, you know, so that is, that is how we structured and, and made it look Nigerian. You know, the chess scene, for example, could have been like a nice, fancy car. Yeah. But we, someone is playing with my mic here. Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> well. no, so, you know, there's something I liked about the movie. Um, that there were times of where it felt so real. You know, um, when RMD walks into and he bangs someone, yeah. his head on the table. That felt so real because I understand that sort of, Anger. impulsive anger. anger that could have made him do that you know it didn't he'd been seem... holding it for a long yes. time yes yeah. and you grab that you know and that's what makes movies exciting like mm. i can relate to that feeling i can relate to that emotion and i love that you did that with the so movie so that was the reason i didn't finish the movie the weapons and i can watch that but it looks so real and i don't want to believe that he was not real so let us know whether it was or not <laughs> and you know the ratings because my seven year old just get, what me what are, what you know it was all over me. I had to just close my phone and stop watching. So, what what was uh, you know the were the weapons real? Did you get a license for them? Did you, how did you use them? Again, back to whenever we felt in doubt about anything, simplicity and authenticity. So authenticity means that like you have to, if I'm if I'm pointing a gun at a person in the film, that gun better be real. It will. Because, and so I avoided new guns. We worked with the police, and the IG of police gave us, like, approval for it. It took a while. It took about a year of work. With the military. But no bullets, yeah? <laughs> they fire bullets. Hey, you know what so, happened with so Alec Baldwin? There's a process for gun safety. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trained. I'm a trained weapons handler. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when the, um, when the weapons guy comes in, brings it, Test, test weapons, the props guy tests the weapons. Before any gun gets on my set, I test the weapons myself as well. 
Mm. Wow. All right, and I disassemble, make sure that Boxing. every single, and some days we had up to 100 guns on set. Yeah, well, <laughs> wow. yeah. <laughs> See, we are fighting already. And then so you have to like disassemble every single one right. of them, be sure wow. that it's safe. But like, wow. we, it was important that we don't use new guns and so that the guns that get on set, they look yeah. They look like yeah. these guys feel. have been, mm. they feel real. They feel like so they've been in action. Was, yes. You decided to open your books, show us or tell us how much you spent. And this is not the norm in mm. Nollywood. And a lot of money. Yes, it's not the norm. People just want to cover. So you may probably don't scare people who are trying to get into the business or for whatever reason. But what informed you opening your books to the world? And um, what do you think do that would... <laughs> do for the Nollywood industry? Violence is the enemy. Mm. That is the enduring lesson out of the black book. Silence is the enemy. Silence is the enemy of growth. Silence is the enemy of progress. Mm. For as long as we do not speak up about the things that we need to see, then we become the enemy of the growth that we are trying to build. And so it's the same thing. We can say in film that silence is the enemy and we are not picking up speak. about the things that... I, the Black Book cost a million dollars to make, yes. But when you look at it, the performance on Netflix, it wasn't competing against African pictures. It was competing against global films, yes, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Tens of millions of dollars in budget, a few hundred million dollar budget, but it was competing on an equal footing. Mm. How did that make you feel? Because, you know, in a few days it was out and then Millions. we all saw the ratings. How did that make you feel? Especially how Gratitude, much I spent. I think. <laughs> Gratitude. Um, I always told the guys on my set from the day one that we met that if we met the film that we, we want to make, that we would break things, that we would do something. I thought we were going to be a global film. I thought we were going to make a global film. I think that the world needs to be ready for African storytelling. Yeah. Mm. We can make films that compete globally. We do not need to attach Hollywood act artists. We do not mm. need to bring foreigners yeah. to come yeah. to make yeah. global films. Yeah. We can make films, <coughs> Africans, huh. by Africans, for Africans, but for the world. The world mm. Gets on board. Black Book was number one in South Korea. Yeah. It's still trending in South Korea. It's trending in, in China. So yet two days ago, Chinese TV came so to interview mm -hmm. us because, dude, <laughs> what it's, are you it's, doing? It's, you got to run, well. run out of yeah. time. Have we, have we run out of time? Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so very much for having me. Yeah. I'm looking forward to your next pro project. And I, I mean, I am a mission. Just this enjoy one, this project. This one, I mean, it's a huge <laughs> No, actually, um, I'm already in yeah. script review for, uh, for January. I'll be shooting uh, in January. Oh, yeah, that's oh, amazing. amazing. All right, that's all we can take Thank on today's show. Me. Join Veronica and the other ladies on the um, will be tomorrow. See you later then. Have a great week. No. <laughs>